Back at the start of this winter, I exchanged the stock tyres that came on my Ford F-150 Lightning Lariat with winter-ready Nokian Hakapalita R5 SUVs. I've been driving on those tyres since November, December, and I've done some significant mileage. And today, with the coldest day we've had thus far, with wind chill at or below zero degrees Fahrenheit, that's well into negative Celsius, I'm going to tell you how the tyres have done thus far. We're going to take a little bit of a trip. I'm going to explain how the tyres work, how they've held up, what it's been like towing with them, what it's been like road tripping with them, and tell you whether I think you should invest the hefty amount of money that these tyres are worth. But first, got to defrost the truck. <music> At the start of the winter, when we put these winter tyres on our F-150 Lightning Lariat, I explained our history with Nokian Hakapalita and I hinted at why we wanted to use non-studded winter tyres for this vehicle as opposed to studded ones, namely that we don't always have snowpack throughout the winter. In fact, most of the winter we don't have snow and if we did decide to go with studded tires, we'd actually be doing a lot of damage to the local roads. It would also affect our braking performance in dry conditions, and it would also affect our vehicle's energy efficiency. But now we've had a significant dumping of snow. I feel like this is the great time to give you an update. Now, for most of the winter, I have been driving this truck on these tires, the Nokian Hakabalita R5 SUVs, and there hasn't been a whole lot of snow on the ground. And for the most part, the tires have been great. I have driven substantial distances with them. The last long distance trip that I made earlier this week was up to see Kate Walton Elliott, who lives up in Washington state and back to my house. It's about a 300 mile round trip and the truck did just fine on roads that were a mixture of cold and dry and cold and wet. I will say in dry conditions where there's no snow around, if you do have to drive on gravel roads, which I do a fair amount because of where I live, you get to a situation where you will find that those winter tires, because they have extra siping in them that's designed to grab snow, you do end up picking up a lot of stones. And when you drive on a gravel road or a dirt road, as soon as you get back onto tarmac, you do end up with that ding, ding, ding noise for a couple of miles as all of those stones work their way out of the tire. We've not had any worries about loss of tire pressure and we've not had any worries about punctures with these tires. I have had punctures in my previous Nokian tires on the Bolt, but again, that was more bad luck than anything wrong with the mm. tire. In terms of energy efficiency. Right now I'm averaging 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour, but a lot of that is because 15% of my energy is going to climate control because it is very cold outside right now. And so my truck is doing everything it can to keep the cabin nice and toasty. So I do not have to worry about that. Around about the Christmas holidays, my in-laws came to stay and they were caught up in the massive winter storm that happened in the Midwest. They managed to get out of the Midwest and got to, I think, Arizona. And rather than turn around and go back because the flight to Portland was cancelled because of ice, they decided to fly down to California instead, which meant that my, my wife had to drive this truck down to Sacramento in an ice storm to pick up her parents to bring them back up to Portland. It took her about 30 hours round trip and she did it in this truck. 
in very poor conditions where there was heavy ice rain and the roads were very very slick but because she had these winter tires on and because she drove according to the correct conditions she was just fine these are i think probably the most energy efficient winter tires i've driven on and you have to remember that the f-150 lightning is not designed to be an aerodynamic vehicle and i wonder if i was driving a more efficient vehicle like the i don't know the hyundai ionic 6 for example whether i would notice with that car were it wearing nokian hakapalitas whether there was a more noticeable drop in efficiency i haven't really noticed this in any great mm -hmm. detail and i would say that when the temperature is about the same the difference between mm -hmm. winter tires and summer tires is maybe 0.1 mile per kilowatt hour that's about all i've really actively noticed and in winter my range has dropped on this truck i did nearly 300 miles the other day on a single charge i did have to stop and recharge so i probably maybe did closer to I think I probably recharged after about 260 miles. I could have made it, but I wanted to make sure I had enough in the battery to make it back home because it was this storm was just moving in and it was thinking about mm. starting to snow. So efficiency hasn't been a major concern of mine. Mm. Neither has traction. I've driven in a variety of different conditions with this truck. And for the most part, I haven't lost traction. I think I've lost traction today once, and that was more a case of hitting a really icy spot and everybody else was sliding around too. My traction control sorted it out and I was able to you know, carry on mm. in the direction. I was able to stop, slow down. That has not been affected by these tires. The other thing that is worth noting is that last week or the week before I helped my daughter move house and so I rented a small trailer uh, one of those little trailers that you can get from from U-Haul that goes behind a truck or a car it was a 6x12 trailer and I was able to tow just fine and no issues <laughs> I've also towed Michael's car, Michael's Chevrolet Volt, which isn't exactly light. And again, no worries with the winter tires. They performed just as well as the summer tires when towing. I'm now on unplowed road, and this really is where these Nokian Hakapalita R5 SUVs come into their own. As I explained in the previous video, how these winter tires work, they have a rubber compound that allows the tire to retain some suppleness even down to really cold temperatures and it has sipes on the tire that grip the snowpack and create a, uh, a band of snow around the tire that actually increases your grip if you ever remember playing with snow as a child and making a snowman you'll remember that you know you make your snowman by by making a little ball of snow and then pushing it along the ground and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger because of that friction on the snow. And that is how these tires work. They effectively grab hold of this fresh layer of snowpack and then allow your vehicle to use that snowpack to help you continue to have a healthy amount of grip and in temperatures like this it's now minus three degrees celsius which is what 20 something fahrenheit it was minus four earlier but it's down into the negative teens with wind chill so the actual snow is a lot colder than what the truck is reporting um, there's no issues I, i'm not losing traction the, the truck is going where i want it to go and everything is nice and hunky dory the benefit here that I'm finding is that because these tires are not studded, I'm getting this excellent grip on snowpack, but as soon as we hit dry road, it takes a couple of, of revolutions of the tires for the truck to, to get rid of all of that snow that it has in the tires. And it's, it's back, to, back to normal non-snow traction and that's what i like about these tires i suppose i should probably point out that these tires are not exactly 
affordable. They are towards the pricier end, depending on the size of vehicle that you're buying these for. And as I said in our previous video, these are available as both SUV versions that are designed for, for trucks and SUVs and for passenger car variants. They can be anywhere from $1,000 to just over $2,000, depending on your wheel size and your vehicle specifications. As always, you should check with your tire professionals to make sure that you're buying the right tires for your vehicle, especially with an EV, because EVs require um, heavier duty tires than your average passenger car because EVs are heavier and so you need to make sure that your winter tires are actually rated to carry the extra weight that an EV brings to the party. These are rated to carry I think 2,000 pounds per tire and my truck is about six and a bit so it it's definitely well within the limit uh, and even if I loaded this truck up to its its maximum allowable limit so be six and a bit thousand pounds plus 1800 in the back I'd still be within the limit of what this uh, these tires are capable of supporting so it's important that you make sure that, that that is something that you check before you make that purchase decision after driving on regular roads and roads that have not been plowed we're now going to push it up a notch and we're going to drive on gravel roads that have not been plowed and that is a very different experience because we're not only driving on road that is loose because it's got gravel in it but we're also driving on snowpack and ice we're climbing up a hill this is effectively some of the worst conditions that you're likely to encounter if you have a lot of winter driving to do and again in a situation like this studded tires might be better but there's no issues with, with grip. I can see where people have spun out. I'm keeping a constant position on my accelerator. I'm not making any dramatic changes to my direction. And the truck is just eating it up. <laughs> I'm just driving through, through drifting snow right now. <laughs> oh, I got stuck. <laughs> as i'm climbing up the hill here we're hitting more and more fresh snow areas where people have not driven before and again no slipping no issues and in order to have the ability to go anywhere in weather like this having winter tires trumps all-wheel drive a lot of people will look at this and say yeah but winter tires are not required if you have all-wheel drive and my answer to that is this all-wheel drive just means you're capable of sending power to all four wheels that your vehicle has winter tires mean that your vehicle is capable of using that power and sending it to the road in as safe a way as possible ensuring the best grip as possible I have an all-wheel drive vehicle, but I can tell you there have been moments today when I would have been stuck had it not been for my winter tires. I actually got stuck once with these winter tires, and that was because I hit a snowbank a little bit too close, and that front end of the car went, no, no, we're not going through that, thank you very much. conclusion then if you have to drive in winter months and you do sometimes get significant snowfall you can't beat the Nokian Hakapalita R5 SUVs if you have a heavier EV and the R5s are just as good for regular old EVs if you want something that isn't going to damage the road is going to give you great efficiency and is also going to give you good traction when the weather is bad let me know in the comments below if you use these tyres and thanks again to Nokian for providing these tyres to us so that we can give you our honest thoughts. That is it for today's video. I'm staying in the truck because it's now negative 6 before wind chill and about negative 15 
with wind chill. If you liked this video, you know what to do and feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments are open for your thoughts, as is our Discord chat room. There is a link below. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links below to our Ko-Fi, Bitcoin and Swag store. And do check us out on Mastodon. It's a really cool place to be. You can tell us about your winter travels with your EV. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing Charged Up supporters. And shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters. Mike Weeder, Tony Moss, Linda Irish, Sean Tucker, Patrick Boyarski, Paul Nelson, Chris Maxwell. I'm going to turn off my auto wipers. Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mira Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazlet in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Anthony Coates, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Ray Jean Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Asenta and Jim Burness. Finally, super out of this world thanks to our top tier supporters. They are Robert Flannery, CPU Freak 101, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Aaron Hahn, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Grainin and Ian. We'll be back soon with more great content but until then... I hope that you stay warm and safe wherever you are. And as always, keep evolving.